Hi everyone, it's Allison with the Everyday Scrapbooker. Welcome back to my channel. I took a little bit of a break uh, for Christmas and then we were gone for a couple of days as a family. Headed down to visit the in-laws and grandparents. And now I'm back and ready to get back into the groove of things. So I thought I'd start with a uh, layout. It's another mixed media layout and I did the mixed media for this layout off camera because originally I hadn't actually planned on doing a process video and then on a whim just decided there was no time like the present and so turned on the camera and here we are. So I have, as you can see, the watercoloring done and I went out on a limb this time for me at least, it's going out on a limb, and watercolored pattern paper. I've never done that before. So all I did to watercolor it was first prime the area that I wanted to watercolor with some clear gesso. I just used my finger to spread it around. Quite honestly, I found so far using my finger to spread it is has worked the best. Um, if I've used a palette knife or an old gift card or credit card, debit card, something like that, it's never, um, I've, I've had trouble applying it evenly and there's always gaps, if that makes sense. There's parts of the paper that are not covered with the gesso in the end and so the water and the color soaks through and... It doesn't make me happy. So I just kind of started using my finger rather than applying the gesso to the entire paper, kind of map out where I want to apply the watercolor, put the gesso on using my finger, dry it with a hair dry, uh, dry it with my heat tool, and then I'm ready to go. I used Close to My Heart products to create this layout. And actually, having said that, I used mostly scraps that I've had lying around except for the base that's a given but just about everything else on this layout um, was floating around either in my paper storage or on my desk and I wanted to get some of those used up so the frame that is behind the photo that had been cut previously and I didn't use it so I used it here. I just attached it to the layout base with some liquid glass. And then the flowers uh, I had two made that I made like seriously months ago and they've been floating around for quite a while. Same with the leaf that or the two leaves that you see on the layout as well. I've had those around for quite a while. And I laid them out on the layout and loved the way it looked. But the more I got to looking at the layout as I worked, the more I felt like just the two flowers wasn't enough. So luckily, and you'll see this later on in the video, luckily I had some extra watercolor paper that was already watercolored so I just went and stamped those flowers again I heat embossed them with gold embossing powder and fussy cut them out and threw them on the layout and you'll see how it transforms as the layout goes at this point I need to mention and if you're on a follower of my Facebook page you'll have already heard this but I was not happy with the direction this layout was going. Uh, I felt like there was too much watercoloring in the background. I wanted to cover it up somehow, but I didn't know how, and I just wasn't happy with how the layout looked. And quite honestly, there are a few times that I just wanted to scrap it and start all over again, but I chugged along and happily, it has turned into one of my most favorite layouts to date. I mean, I have lots of favorites, but of recent layouts that I've made, this has turned into an absolute favorite. So right now I'm just gluing the title to the base. I cut the title with my Cricut 
And the, the idea for the title actually came from a journaling card. I have a journaling card in my stash that says, let's fiesta. And I looked at it and I was like, well, it's not really going to work on this layout because, well, I guess napping is a fiesta. Some would consider it that. But I didn't want to use the word fiesta. And so I thought of siesta right away. And I was like, oh, that's cute. I want to use it. But I don't have siesta on my Cricut. So I just created my own title using the type function on my Cricut sized it to the size that I wanted and cut it out. And of course, it's my favorite font, the American typewriter. And then I also used the modern typewriter alpha stamp set from close to my heart to complete the title. And I think it looks awesome. I love it. I love how the frame sort of frames it too. And it hangs off of the frame part of the title. It's I think it works. It's pretty cute. So right now I'm just playing around with some of some of the um what are these called? The phrase word stickers that I have in my stash. I have these Chrissy Ann, I believe they're called Chrissy Ann phrase stickers that are really tongue in cheek, kind of snarky. And after I bought them, I was like, you know, I don't know how often I'm going to use these. I still don't know how often I will use them, but I thought that it would work well on this layout. And the sticker that I chose was, can we do a, uh, how does it go? Can I have a do over? <laughs> I thought it was cute and I thought it would work with the layout. I also had to work in my Tim Holtz phrase stickers as well from the clicking clip pings. Uh, sticker pack and so work that into the laid as well. So here is where I decided to stamp more of these flowers. This stamp is also from Close to My Heart. It's an older Close to My Heart stamp so it's not currently available but as you can see I'm heat embossing it. I only did the one flower because at this point I was thinking I was only going to add one more but decided later on that a few more needed to be added. So I did those off camera and you'll see them magically appear in just a minute here. So I'm just gonna fussy cut this flower out. I'll stamp some more leaves as well. And the leaves that I stamp coming up here, I use the rock and roll stamping technique with two varying shades of green, also close to my heart products. The two hearts that I have in the upper left hand corner of the frame, I decide not to use and you can see now that I've I've taken them off. I thought I was going to use them because the one heart had some yellows and oranges in it and I thought it would work really well with the color scheme, color scheme that I have going, but I decided against it. Um, I didn't really want to go with the hearts sort of thing. I just wanted to keep using the flowers because they looked amazing. So here I'm stamping the leaves. I just mentioned that a moment ago and then fussy cut those out as well. I stamped an extra five, I think it was, and I'm only gonna cut one on camera and then I'll turn the camera off and cut the rest just to save time. I tried really hard in this layout to stick with uh, blue, orangey yellow and green pink sort of color theme. So the flowers really kind of stay fairly closely to those colors and then the green comes in where the leaves are concerned. But you'll also notice that where I put the word phrased sticker on top of the flower, there was a, a pennant there that had been floating around for a while before I put this on. I was thinking that I'd wanted to use that pennant. I cut it off of a journaling card from my stash but I ended up feeling like it was too big and bulky and didn't want to use it in the end because of that and that's why I opted for a uh, phrase sticker and the phrase sticker was perfect because it also mimicked or I guess picked up the same colors 
that I was going for with the pinks and the yellows and oranges and that sort of thing. So I am just working on placement right now. I have all the flowers done that I want to add to the layout and I'm adding leaves just to help fill it in a little bit more too. And I really find that with all the flowers and the leaves together now really covers up a lot of the water coloring and helps in a way soak up the excess that I had to begin with. And at this point, I'm really starting to fall in love with the layout. It has the perfect amount of water coloring in it, which is originally kind of what I was going for, but I went a little overboard. And I'm so happy that I was able to right a wrong, <laughs> so to speak. And so just a little word of encouragement, when you're sitting and scrapbooking and you're not totally happy with the project that's in front of you, just keep plugging away. Maybe take a break, walk away for a little bit, and then come back to it. But don't give up on that piece of paper that's in front of you because you never know. Something else might strike your fancy and it ends up working and it ends up being a happy ending in the end, kind of like this layout here. I, of course, need to add the date to my layout. That's what I'm doing right now, and I'm just giving it the old uh, three-generation stamping to just give it a little bit more whimsy and uh, I don't know what you call it. Just make it a little bit more messy looking. And of course, I have to add my thread. There's got to be thread somewhere on a layout, and so I've got a few places here that I'm going to add it. I think I'm using my light pink sewing thread on this layout, and I'll just add it in a few different places around the layout to give it that visual triangle that I try so hard to incorporate. I know it's a rule and rules are meant to be broken and sometimes it just doesn't need to be but I do try and adhere to that design principle in my crafting. So I'm just wadding up the thread and placing it in and around and underneath the flowers and I think with that I'm pretty well done. I added some journaling as well down at the bottom underneath the title. Um, but with that, my layout is complete. I hope that it has inspired you to try watercoloring and watercoloring on pattern paper. It really is fun and adds a lot of neat texture. I've got a few uh, close-ups coming up, so I hope you stick around for that. But I want to thank you for joining me, and I will see you again very soon. Bye, guys.